and everyone welcome back to life e technologies channel and thank you for watching so today we are continuing with the huawei lab simulation series where we are demonstrating how to implement different networking technologies on huawei routing and switching devices and in our today's episode we are starting to implement bgp advanced features so we know bgp is widely used in service provider network and enterprise networks because of its features so it has many advanced features that you need to have a good understanding if you are managing a network that is running bgp so in our subsequent videos we'll be exploring how to implement these advanced features including bgp groups uh, route reflection how to use uh, bgp path attributes to control traffic flow things like local preference med preferred value as path how do you employ these bgp attributes to control traffic flow in your network we'll also explore how to use things like bgp communities how to use route policies to control route advertisements how to implement uh, bgp authentication and many other features that are used in bgp and remember bgp is commonly used in service provider network so you really need to have a good understanding of it and how to efficiently use different features to achieve uh, what you are trying to i mean to achieve the requirements for the network so in our today's episode we'll be demonstrating how to use bgp groups we know service provider networks have so many routing devices you can have a hundred some thousands or even hundred thousands of routers in your network so for example an IPR network for service provider like safaricom or airtel can have thousands of routers so if you want to start configuring these devices it will be the workload will be too much so you need to find ways in which you can reduce the workload when you are doing the configurations especially for the new devices that you are adding in the network so the main reason why we need bgp groups is to first it help us to reduce the workload instead of doing repetitive configurations we just need to classify these devices into groups and then we can apply policies on the groups so it's similar when you are doing like the authentication you don't need to do repetitive tasks like if you are creating users in the network you don't need to uh, assign You don't need to assign roles to every individual user you can just use groups you create groups you assign roles to the groups and then these users you assign them to a group so it's very easy to manage these groups instead of managing every individual user so similarly to bgp we can create groups and then we assign these devices to groups and instead of doing the repetitive configuration like you need to specify the connect interface you need to specify maybe route reflection or any other maybe route policies you don't need to apply these commands to every individual router you just apply them in the groups so it has reduced the workload in terms of configuration and it's also when you are troubleshooting it's very easy because you have reduced the workload and then you have also reduced the number of commands that you have in the device so even when you are checking the configuration commands it's very easy to go through them and identify the issue that you are having on your configuration so bgp groups are very common in service provider networks and even in some enterprise networks so instead of uh, doing the configurations on every individual device as i've mentioned before you just apply common configurations on the group level so you can create two types of groups you can either have internal groups or you can have external groups and when you are creating the groups if you don't specify that this is an external group then it will be an internal group by default so when you are configuring the groups you need to specify is it external or is it internal then after getting the group you can now go ahead and assign these uh, routers for example r11 r2 r12 r3 you can now create 
you can now assign them to this group and they will be they will be inheriting the configurations of the group so as you can see in our network for the bgp groups we will be implementing it in our as100 where we have r1 r1 will be acting as our route reflector so other routers r3 r11 r2 and r12 will be pairing with r1 so we only implement groups on r1 because that is the router that has so many pairings but you can also do groups on r2 r11 r3 and r12 but given that it's only pairing to one r1 uh, there is no need to really implement groups but you can still go ahead and do that for our demonstration we are only using r1 to do the groups so on r1 we'll be creating two groups one group for internal peering and another group for external peering. So we have IBGP group and then we have EBGP group. So for the configuration part, step one as usual, we are just configuring system host names, IP addresses and OSPF on all routers. Remember we'll be using loopback zero for connectivity. So we are using OSPF as our IGP to ensure that there is reachability from different routers especially from the our r1 which is which is the rr to other routers r2 r11 r3 and r12 so these are the configuration you need to assign ip address on interfaces create loopback zero and then we are configuring ospf process 10 on the router and they are all in area zero and then we advertise the networks we advertise loopback zero and the connected interfaces so these are the configuration for our R1. R2 is same. We create interface loopback 0. We assign IP addresses. Remember, we are using slash 32. And then we assign IP addresses on the interface, the interconnected interface between different routers. Then we create OSPF and advertise the networks. R11 is the same. R3, same. Just interfaces, configuration, and OSPF. R12 is the same. So if we log into this router, just to verify that uh, our OSPF is established, we can on R1, if I do display OSPF peer, you can see that we have three peerings to router 2, router 3, and router 12. So we expect if we pin the loopbacks of any of these routers, it will be reachable. We can also ping 11.11.11.11, it's reachable. We ping 12.12.12.12, it's also reachable. So we have display OSPF peer. We have the peerings are up on all the routers. So we have already configured the IGP and we have reachability or connectivity from uh, the other routers to the route reflector so once we have implemented ospf and we have reachability the next step is to configure bgp on all routers and i've mentioned that you need to create groups on r1 so on r1 we are creating two groups and you use the command once you are in the bgp configuration view you need to run the command group then you specify the group the group name so in this case, we have eBGP, which we are specifying that this is external group. And then we have IBGP, which is our internal group. So this is for internal, this is for external peers. So other configuration are the same. You need to specify this peer to configure this peer. And then we are now binding the peer to this group. So this peer is now part of the group eBGP. The other peers, the IBGP peers are binded to the group IBGP. Down here, we do the same under the IPv4 Unicast family. This is the one that we are using. We are enabling the peer IBGP enable. And then we also enable the peer IBGP enable. So if we check, as I've mentioned, if you don't specify the group name, the group, whether it's a... Uh, if you don't specify it to be internal or external, it will be internal by default. So if I do display this just to see the configurations, remember I've already configured these configurations on the routers for 
saving time. So if we check on this one and we try to create a group, if I run group, you can see that you need to give a string 1 to 47. So this is the group name. And I do maybe test 1. You can see you can either specify external or internal or you can just click enter. If I click enter and we check these configurations, you can see that group 1 has been assigned internal. So if you don't specify either internal or external, it will be internal by default. So you need to be specific and specify either external or internal. So once we've configured our R1, we also configure R11, R3, R2, and R12. So on R11, it's very easy. We are using Lubac 0 as our router ID. So it will be router ID 11.11.11.11, .11 .11 and then we are peering to R1. So all the routers are peering to R1. So, and we are using connect interface Lubac 0. So one thing to mention, like uh, for the R1 configuration, because we are focusing on group peerings, you can see that we are specifying peer and then the group IBGP, we are using connect interface loopback zero. So if you, you are not having the group IBGP, it means you need to run all these peers, all these, uh, as you can see for IBGP, we have uh, four peers. So you need to run this command four times on each individual peer so you can see then workload if you have something like a hundred routers or maybe let me say just 20 routers you need to run all these commands on this router and just making it not easy to do the configuration and even to do the troubleshooting so with these bgp groups we are reducing the number of commands that we need to run on the router and it's very easy to manage these groups especially if you are configuring route policies to control route advertisements or even you are applying other features that uh, needs bgp that runs that are supported by bgp so you end up reducing on the configuration workload and it's making it very easy to manage these peering sessions so if we check the peering on r1 of course, the EBGP, we are not configuring EBGP for now. But if I do display BGP peer, you can see that we have the four peerings. We only implemented the IBGP. The EBGP is configured, but not the peer end, because this one will come in when we are doing other advanced features. So our focus is just on S100, the internal IBGP peering in this AS. So once we have configured our peering, as you can see, we have the peerings. Uh, let me just undo terminal monitor and clear the screen. So display BGP peer. You can see we have these peerings that are already up. We have four peerings. And these are the details that we'll get. The message sent, uh, the up, down, time, the state, the preference, the AS, remember we are all in S100 for our IBGP peerings. So once we have configured the BGP peering groups, we can display BGP group. And this one will give us details about the group that we have configured. So you can see we have, we have a group called external, the type external. We have a peer group EBGP, the type is external. Authentication, we haven't configured any authentication. Uh, remote AS is not specified. We haven't configured remote AS on this BGP peer group because we have different peerings in this group. And then the peer session members, we have two. The, uh, the peer members, we also have two here indicated. We have another BGP peer group called IBGP. The remote AS is 100. And then we have peer session members and peer members. We have also tested with this group, test one. We haven't specified any peer, so we don't have details for these ones. So this is how simple it is to implement BGP groups. 
you can also search a given group for example if you want to display bgp group ibgp you can see the details it's even giving you the peering sessions the peer members the sessions are up we can do ebgp it also gives you the details about this group and even the timers so yeah you can see with BGP peer groups, we have really reduced the number of configurations command that we need to run. And it's very easy to manage these groups instead of managing each individual peerings with the RR. So uh, thank you for watching again. Uh, this is the end of our episode for this uh BGP advanced features for implementing the BGP groups and stay tuned for more implementations. We'll be covering more features about BGP, the advanced features in our subsequent videos. So kindly subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Thank you.